Hello and welcome to the Knights of the Rectangular Table YouTube channel. I'm Micah. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a robot. This is for FLL, but not FLL exclusively. You can use the, the ideas in other robotics competitions. So first, we need all the motors and the brick that we're going to use. So we have two large motors, two medium motors, and an EV3 brick. Next, we want to arrange these motors in a very compact way. And the way that our team has done this is we have put the put the large motors like this. And then we put the medium motors underneath our brick. And so our robot is a little bit taller than most, but it's very compact. So the next thing that we're going to do is attach the motors to the brick. Alright, so what I've done now is I took a square beam, I don't know what to call these, a frame I guess, and I have attached it to the two large motors using these pegs, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pegs and put it onto the robot just like that. But before I want to do that, I'm also going to connect this side with another beam, uh, frame so that we can connect it to other things later on. So after I've done that, I need to figure out a way to connect it to the color sensors. And, uh, not the color sensors, the medium motors, which go right here. So the way that I've done that is with this. So I'm attaching it to right here and right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to use two T-shaped pieces to provide a secure connection to another beam frame. These beam frames are really nice, and this will connect using these two pegs to our color sensor, which has been put in with two of these pegs. If you don't have these pegs, you can use just three, three pegs. I don't know what to call either of these, but both of them work equally well. And so that's going to connect in right here. But while I was doing this, I realized we need to put in our, our gyro sensor. And I thought that right there, it would fit perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I've attached it to two, three pieces, and I'm just going to slide it in right there. And that actually needs to be connected more strongly. So I'm going to use this right here. And this is kind of weird, but the way I did it was I put in this, this little piece. That was tight and this piece and both of these have square axle holes and that is going to allow me to slide this beam in there for an even more stable connection alright so after I've got the gyro sensor in there now I can connect the other two large motors I mean medium motors because these are not large motors I'm sorry guys alright all I have to do now is connect these medium motors to the brick itself and so I'm just going to use one of these pieces these three flat beam frames and a handy dandy piece I don't know what to call it but it's really useful it looks like this it looks like this the most useful thing in the world if you don't have them you should get them alright so now that we've got the two large motors and the medium motors connected we need to connect the sensors and let me figure out how I'm going to do that alright guys so I added on this piece to the top to make shells slip on easier you don't have to add it completely optional and then what I used is a 5 by 3 L to attach the color sensor and the uh, rolly ball <laughs> That's the caster wheel, that's the word I'm looking for. And that's going to attach right onto the side of the uh, medium motor. And then I'm going to use a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's a 9. <clears throat> and that 9 is going to attach it to that. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to do that on the other side with another one of those. Add in the color sensor and the gyro. So now we've got, <clears throat> not a gyro, we've got two caster wheels, two color sensors, 
a gyro sensor, two medium motors, and two large motors. The next thing I want to do is I want to gear these so that they're facing up. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to have our clutch gear right here at the top. And it's going to use this really nice uh, U-shaped piece that we use for gearing. If you don't have one of these, you should probably get them. And we will leave a link in the description as to where you can buy that piece. But they are in extremely useful for creating super strong gearing. All we have to do now is attach the wheels, which I will do with the wheels that I discussed, that, that we discussed in the, in a previous video, <coughs> right here. And these wheels are great because they're pretty big, but not too big, and they're very thin. I already did the measurements, and it lines up perfectly with the bottom of the caster wheel. And so all we have to do is connect them, and then we'll move on to the shell. Alright, so I'm going to attach the wheels using one of these uh, nine length axles that has a closed thing on the end. Eight. It's eight. That's Thanks, Benji. Um, <laughs> it's going to have a stud and a half of spacers on one side and a stud of spacers on the other side. And this is right where the shell will attach to the wheels. So it'll go right there. Fits in perfect. And the other one will go right here. So next what we want to do is figure out how long it is from the top of the, from the axle of the wheel to the bottom of the ground. So it looks like it's about five, but we don't want to go all the way down, so we're going to use something that's four long. Four long. And what we used is, we used one of the, we used one of these right here that's three, uh, three wide, and then we used a five wide, but we're going to use that hole right there. Or, no, we're going to use this hole right here. And that will attach just like this. Alright, so what I've done is I've attached two of these side bars onto the robot. I'm not going to go into super uh, super depth. That's a weird phrase. Because um, <laughs> I don't want it, to... Your, your shell does not have to be the exact same. On this side, I will note this is handy. You need to use a beam frame so that you can access the charging port. And that's very useful because otherwise you have to break apart your entire robot just to charge it. Alright, so after that, we need to attach the rest of the shell. So before I do that, I'm actually going to attach this shell onto that curved piece as well, just like this and I would do that with the other side but I'm not sure where the pieces are so that's okay. So the way that we attached the back side on is with these pieces right here and so this piece attaches right here. This is the weirdest attachment by far of our attachments but that is okay. Just like that. This side also attaches right there. Let's see. And then this entire piece, which is consistent of a three beam, a five uh, flat beam frame, and several, I think those are 11s, I want to say, and then some 15s and more curved pieces for the edges. And these two pieces are going to click in right there finishing off the back of the shell. Although I do need to... here. There we go. So, that connects just like that. The side connects just like that. And you will notice it's not perfect, but that's because it really doesn't matter. Oof. As long as it's a flat shell, it will work. So now all we have to do is make a shell on this side. I just realized I made a mistake. This piece needs to go right here for our upwards facing colored sensor. And there's no way to do this but to destroy a large chunk of the robot. So 
We're gonna break this apart. Pull out the supports. And let's see how little we're gonna have to destroy. Okay, there we go. So now we're just gonna put this in here and we'll be good to continue working. Oof. Mega oof. Alright. Alright, there we go. Oh, wait, we need to come. Connect the box again. Alright, perfect. So, now what we need to do is make a box. And we want to s preserve space. And what we realized was the only spot on this robot that is past this line is here and here, and so we thought, you know what, we'll just make the shell go through there. So, the way we're going to connect this is, let's see, so we have this piece right here, and this is going to connect on to this side and this, and it just, it gives a gap for this to fit through and these to fit through, which saves an entire row. So let me try to connect this. Well, we finished the shell. It took some work, but it was worth it because we have a nice and compact square robot that's easy to slip attachments onto. I did not go into depth on some steps, but that's just because this is mainly for the design process and not the specific build of this robot. I added uh, gears here in case we want to gear power to the motors. Uh, gear power to wheels that would go on the bottom of our base. And... Don't forget to check the link in the description to buy these wheels and these pieces if you would like to, these gearing pieces. And thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.